In this video, I'll show you how to make this interactive task management tracker in Excel. At the top, you'll get a live snapshot of the KPIs like the task status, the distribution, and the overdue items, so you can see instantly where things stand. And below, you'll see all of the tasks in list format. Best part is, anytime you add a new task, it's going to get automatically accounted for in the KPIs above. Let's get started making this from scratch. Here in Excel, there's really two main sheets we need. First is going to be the dashboard, where we have all of the different tasks, and I've generated some fictitious ones right here. And then next to that, we have a support sheet, which we'll need for things like who are all of the employees that are available, what teams do we currently have, etc. We'll work on that later. And by the way, you can download this Excel file for free in the video description to follow along. The first step is to convert all of this data into a table by pressing Ctrl T. Press on OK there. And if you don't want any of this formatting, you can go under the table design. And here I'm going to untick on banded rows. And then in this area, go to this drop down and I'm just going to choose the light option. You can see this one also gives me no background borders. That said, I want to get rid of all of these borders. For that, the shortcut is Alt W V G. That's the same thing as going to view and ticking on grid lines. You might have also noticed that some columns are missing a bit of data. That's probably because they're calculations. For example, here we have the task duration, which is basically the due date minus the start date. So let's go ahead and calculate that due date minus start date, hit enter there. And because we have this as a table, it spills down all the way to the bottom. That said, ideally, I want this format to be with the days at the end. So I'm just going to press Control Shift down arrow and press Control 1. That opens up all of this format cells area where we're going to write days at the very end. So right now, as a sample, it just says 18. That makes sense. But instead, I'm going to change this to add this hash sign. And then in quotations, I'm going to put days. Close those quotations. You can see what that looks like up top. But ideally, we want a space in between. So I'm going to say 18 days like that press on OK now, and you notice that all of these have days after it, so it's nice and clear what we're referring to. That's one part done, but now we also have the overdue column. So it's this one right here, where depending on whether it's completed, in progress, or not started, we want to be able to see if any of these tasks are past the due date. So we have two conditions. The first one is that it has to be not completed, and the second one is that today's date has to be greater than the due date. So let's do the calculation with an AND function. The first logical test is that this part right here is not equals to. So we do that with the greater than and smaller than sign like that. And in quotations, we have to write the word completed, comma. And the second logical test is that this due date be less than today. And the today function is going to update whenever you open up the file, so it's going to stay fully dynamic. Now we just need to close the parenthesis and hit enter, and by default it's going to give us true or false. So you can see that this one says it's in progress, so it hasn't been completed, but the due date was way back in August. So that's why we're getting a true as the overdue alarm. So far, we're off to a great start, but an important thing to do is make sure that we're future-proofing this Excel file. So when we add a new row in the future, ideally, we don't want people just writing Emily instead of writing Emily Davis. If not, it's going to look like we have two different people, one called Emily and the other one called Emily Davis, which can lead to some confusion. And to avoid this, we can use data validation. So I'm just going to select all of these task owners head over to data and click on this data validation icon. Just press on that. We're going to want a list. And the list is of all of the owners that we have available. So the source is going to be pressed on this button right here under our support sheet. And it's all of these owners that we've got over here. Hit enter there and press on OK. So you'll notice each of these have this drop down of all of the options. And if I were to add a new name down below, let's say I go for Mike, you'll notice that it doesn't let me because it's not part of that list. Instead, here I can really only choose from these options, which is exactly how I want it. Just like in the task owner column, we want to do the same thing for all of these team options based on this team table right here. 
and same with all of the different statuses based on complete in progress and not started the total layer we don't need for now so let me fast forward how i do these awesome now we can actually start working on all of the different kpis but first we need to move everything down and just as a reminder we have drop down lists for the teams the task owners and the status as well so we'll move this area down by a few rows simply by selecting all of it Control x there and i'm gonna drop it roughly to row number 14 Control v over here so you can see i've moved everything down while this area up top is where we'll add the kpis but first other than knowing excel one of the easiest ways to boost your work productivity is knowing how to use chat gpt effectively you can learn how to do that with HubSpot's five essential resources for using ChatGPT at work. By clicking the link in the description, you get access to this resource completely for free. The download includes a template for setting clear guidelines in ChatGPT, a content refinement checklist, a 37 page guide to using ChatGPT at work with 100 plus prompts to try, and much more. Personally, I find the template for setting clear guidelines with ChatGPT particularly useful to stay consistent with my company's brand message, tone, and vocabulary. So I recommend visiting the link in the description below to download these free five resources for using ChatGPT at work. And thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Under the support sheet, you might have noticed we had one strange looking shape, which is this one right here. That's actually the shape that we'll be referencing to create all of the different KPIs. And if you're wondering how you create this type of fade or gradient, let me quickly show you by right-clicking here and going to Format Shape. All the way to the right under the Fill area, you'll notice I've selected the gradient instead of a solid fill. And down over here as the gradient stops, I've chosen which colors I want it to go from and I can move these around as well depending on whether I want the blue to start up top or I want it maybe to start more in the middle. That's basically how you do this. I've added it here to save a bit of time. So we can then just copy it and paste it over here. And the first step is simply going to be to stretch that out roughly all the way to the end here. And that's going to be the actual title. We'll call this the task management tracker. And let me make this a bit bigger. Obviously, feel free to name it something else if you prefer. I'm also going to center it like this. Once we have this foundation, for all the other shapes, it works in the same way. So all I need to do is press Ctrl D to duplicate this one. And I can delete the whole title and change the sizing of it. So let's suppose that I want one right here for one of my KPIs. And instead of just duplicating, you can also move it to the same height. So that's with Ctrl Shift and dragging to the right like that. Let me fast forward how I add all of the shapes. Awesome, now we have the structure nicely laid out. For these two here in the middle, I've simply changed them to the dark blue color. So for that, all you need to do is select any of these and then up top here, just change the color to whatever you want. It's actually very simple. Awesome, and the next step is going to be actually filling in all of these different shapes. Going back to the actual dashboard, over here on the left, we'll have all of the actual statuses for the tasks. So how many are complete, how many are in progress, etc. To count all of these numbers, we're going to use the support sheet. So you can see right here, we have all of the statuses. On the bottom, we'll also add the total. And to actually count these, we can use the count if function. Hit the tab key there, and the range is going to be all of the different statuses right here. Press the comma key, and then go back to the support sheet. So whenever there equals to completed, so comma, and then just completed, then we should get the count for that. And if I hit enter here and drag this down, you'll notice I have the total for in progress and not started. The actual total for everything is simply the sum of these three. So we've got 15 total ones. We have the relevant numbers and now we just need to bring them into the actual dashboard. And for this, we're gonna use a text box. So I'm gonna go over to insert and here under the shapes, I should find the text box as the first thing. That's gonna be first a top text box like this. Let's start with the completed. And I just need to change the formatting here a bit. So it has firstly no background under shape format. Shape fill, I want no fill. So down over here, no fill. Shape outline, again, I don't want one. So no outline. And we just need to do this once 
and then after we're simply going to duplicate it. So I'm gonna change the background color to a white here and probably just make this a bit bigger like that. Let me move this accordingly. Awesome, that's one part and I'm just gonna duplicate by pressing Ctrl D. This is where I'm actually going to write the number itself. And for it here, I'm gonna leave it empty, go to the formula bar, put an equal sign, and from the support sheet, I'm going to go for the completed number, which is the seven. Hit enter there, you'll notice I lose the formatting. So I can just click on this other one, use this paintbrush and click on the seven. So now it's in white. Maybe I should make it a bit bigger though. So I can easily do that over here. Make sure I just move this around accordingly. So this is gonna be the seven count right here. And then we just wanna follow the exact same steps for all of the other parts. So I'm gonna control shift, drag that to the right and instead of the completed maybe this is the not started and the difference here is that i need to change the number so instead of it being the seven i'm gonna go over to here and instead of c3 maybe this is c5 let me just quickly check so yeah it seems like c5 is the not started number and for the formatting you'll notice that it's gone back to this small number so i can click on this other one use the paintbrush again and click on the two now it's formatted the same way. And now let me fast forward how I do the two below. Awesome, this is what it's looking like right now. And for these two middle visuals, it's slightly different as these are going to be bar charts. So under the support sheet, let's make sure our data is all correct. So right here, we need the counts as well. So the count of the task that Sarah has, the count of the task for David, etc. And same thing with the team side. So it's going to be a count if again the range for the owners is going to be all of this part right here. Put a comma there and as the support sheet we just need to select on that particular person. So it's for Sarah and we can just drag this down. Same thing over for this side. Just gonna go a bit fast as you've already seen how it's done. So count if the range is gonna be all of these teams here comma and then we go back to the support sheet and whenever it's finance, hit enter there and let's drag this down to the bottom. Awesome, so we have all the relevant data. We just need to turn this into a visual. So I can actually select the whole area, go over to insert and here as the column part, so this top part right here, we're gonna choose a 2D bar instead. This is what it looks like right now. We just gotta make a few changes. So we don't need the grid lines. We don't need the bottom lines either and that's because we're gonna add the data labels in here. You can see what they look like there on the edge. As we're gonna add this to a dark shape, it makes sense to use a light color. So for these columns under format, shape fill, I'm gonna go for a light color like this. And I'm also not gonna add a background. Let me make sure I click the whole visual here. Shape fill, I'm gonna go for no fill. And I'm also going to go for no outline in here. Nice, now I can get ready to move this, so Control X. And then in the dashboard part, I'm gonna press Control V. Let me make sure I move this over here. And I need to change the background color too, I forgot about that part. So make sure that this is white. Awesome, now let's bring this in a bit closer, see what it's trying to look like. Let me actually make it maybe a touch bigger like this. And you'll notice that these lines seem very thin. We can make these thicker by right clicking and going to format data series. Within this area, we wanna reduce the gap width. That's how we're gonna make these thicker. So I'm just gonna go for something like 100. You can see it's a bit thicker there. Even at 70 is actually better. Also for the title, we can easily move this lower down if you feel like it's bothering you and change the name as well. Awesome, so you can see what this first one looks like. I've changed the title too. And the idea is to do the exact same thing with this side. So I'm gonna go back to the support sheet and do it for this part. Let me fast forward how I do that. Awesome, you can see we now have the distribution by owner and it looks like maybe Sarah's taking on a bit too much. And in terms of by team, it seems well distributed except for marketing, maybe they're not doing enough tasks. One final part comes right over here and this one's very important. For all of the different tasks that are overdue, so when we have the true here, we should probably have a big KPI showing that. For this, we'll go back to the support sheet and use this overdue area with another count if again. And this time the range is all of these overdue parts. 
put a comma there and the criteria is that it has to say the word true with a close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now we've got two, which seems to make sense as this one line there. And for the actual text boxes, we can just take them from this side and sh control shift and drag to move them over to the side. Let me fast forward how I make the changes. I've made it nice and big here, but one important thing is that it also has number two because we copied it from this side, but we need to make sure that it's linking the right area. So I'm gonna put an equal sign in here under my support sheet, make sure it's not from the status part, but rather from the overdue part we calculated. When you do, you'll notice it goes back to the wrong format. So I'm actually just going to take it from this side and paste it over here. Just need to make it a lot bigger though. So something like that is looking a lot nicer. Let me scroll back up here. And overall, it looks like we have a fully functioning task management tracker. That said, there's still a few important things that I want changed. Even though right now we can add new tasks. So let's say I just put task 016 in here. You'll notice that all of these things already get calculated. So that's quite nice. I can copy some dates here and you'll notice that they dynamically update. All of these, I also have the drop down options. And if I look above, let's say I change the name here to add, let's say David Kim. You'll notice that David Kim's count does go up. So it's all looking dynamic. Let me delete that by pressing Ctrl minus and it goes back to the original. That said, as we scroll down there, we couldn't actually see the KPIs anymore. And if you got a large list of tasks, it would be nice to see the top part. For this, what we can do is go to cell A15. So that's basically where I want the cutoff. And I'm gonna go over to view and press on freeze panes and freeze panes again. Now I can keep scrolling down and you'll notice I can get to the very bottom and way past it but that top part is always going to stay still. Other than that, it would be nice to have different colors depending on the status. So when it's completed, maybe it can be in green, when it's in progress in yellow, and finally not started in red. For that, it's quite an easy fix. Control shift down to get to the bottom there, and we're gonna go over to home and choose conditional formatting. Within this area, we want to highlight cell rules when they're equals to a particular text value. The word is completed here, and those should be filled instead of in red in a green color. Press on OK. You can see that updating there. Same thing goes with the other rules. So it's going to be when it's equals to the word in progress. It's going to be in, ye in yellow this time, and not in red, but in yellow. And let me fast forward how I do the last one. Awesome, we now have this nice coloring on the bottom. Best part is if I change this status to not started, you'll notice how the conditional formatting updates automatically. Maybe we wanna do the same thing for this overdue part when it's equals to the word true. That's also easy to do. Conditional formatting, highlight cell rules when they're equals to the word true there. We want it in red. That makes sense. After all, it means that these two are going to be overdue. Because we've set up all of the data here in the tracker as a table, whenever we add new rows, it's also going to update on the actual conditional formatting. So it's going to drag it down. So if I go for 16 in here, and let's say I put the status as completed, you'll notice that it's nicely put in green. Awesome, and that's how you build a task management tracker in Excel. That said, one thing we didn't cover is a navigation bar that typically you might add on the side. If you want to learn how to make that with the same brand colors, you should watch this video over here. And if you struggled with some of the Excel parts in this video, then you should check out our Excel course over here to learn more. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.